Hello students, welcome to this video session of heat transfer. This is Sekhar, a senior most faculty from M Sigma Gokulam. In fact, this subject heat transfer is a very, very prominent and important subject from the gate point of view because the weightage of this subject in the gate examination mechanical engineering paper is around 7 to 10 marks. In fact, it may touch even more than 10 marks also. In the gate 2022, in the recent uh, years, it has crossed uh, more than 10 marks. But an average weightage you can expect between 7 to 10. So a good weightage uh, from this subject. Why this is uh, so uh, important subject is, practically also almost all the industries connected to the mechanical engineering, uh, they require they, this knowledge or the concept of this subject called heat transfer. Whether you are designing any power plant component like a boiler or a condenser or even a cooling tower uh, or, uh, or uh, when you are designing any automobile engine like an IC engine or whenever you are designing a gas turbine power plant component. So the concepts of the heat transfer are very much essential or you are designing one uh, space uh, uh, rocket which is uh, taking the satellite into the space. So there also the con uh, concept of uh, heat transfer is so important. So uh, the, 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 the practical knowledge and the concepts of the heat transfer are very much essential in the mechanical engineering core subjects. Uh, and also there is another important subject called thermodynamics which is very closely related to this subject called heat transfer. Okay, so thermodynamics and heat transfer and also another subject called fluid mechanics, all three are intertwined subjects. So if you know one subject, if you know, you will be understanding other, so other two subjects very, very easily. So that is the uh, interrelation among these three important subjects of mechanical engineering. One is thermodynamics, second thing is heat transfer, the third thing is fluid mechanics. Particularly in the heat transfer, there is one chapter called convection heat transfer. In that particular chapter, the knowledge of the fluid mechanics, the concepts of the fluid mechanics are very much essential in understanding that particular chapter or that particular topic called as a convection heat transfer, whether it is a forced convection or a free convection heat transfer. So uh, come on, let, us, uh, uh, let me start this subject, very important subject called as the heat transfer. When you talk about the heat, this word heat, this word heat will be coming in two different subjects very often. One is thermodynamics, another thing is heat transfer. Now, I would like to distinguish in what way this term heat is different between these two subjects. In what way it will be different in these two fundamental subjects of mechanic, uh, mechanical engineering, I would like to highlight there. So if we just look at the thermodynamics there, in thermodynamics, heat is termed as a, a path function. Heat is termed as a path function. You know a thermodynamic path, a given path, initial state P1, V1, T1, final state P2, V2, T2. You know a thermodynamic process, maybe some polytropic process or isothermal process. You will be given a, the, what is the kind of the process. We know the initial state, we know the final state. In all the thermodynamic problems, in all the thermodynamic problems, you will be interested in calculating, you will be interested in calculating how much how much heat will be required to take the state, to take the system, thermodynamic system from this initial state to this final state too. In almost every thermodynamic problems, the unknown will be how much heat will be required to give, to take that given thermodynamic system from this initial state 1 to the final state 2. Given the thermodynamic path, you will be knowing the path, you know the initial state, you know the final state you will be asked to calculate what is the heat, uh, how much heat is required. So the final answer you will be getting uh, Q, Q in joules. You will be getting the answer, okay, kilojoules or joules. But when you come to the heat transfer, this heat is termed, is calculated always in joule per second or watt. You will always be interested in calculating the rate of heat transfer. It is not the amount of heat that we are interested in. Rather, in the heat transfer subject, we are more interested in calculating the rate of heat transfer, the rate at which heat is being transferred. 
suppose if we just look at this thermodynamic problem, thermodynamic simply bothers about how much heat is required to get the system from this initial state to the final state. How much time will be taken by the system to go from this 1 to 2, thermodynamics will not bother. Thermodynamics cannot do that. Thermodynamic subject, the, the concepts of the thermodynamics will not be able to calculate then uh, the knowledge of the thermodynamics will not be able to calculate how much time might be taken by the system to go from the initial equilibrium state to the final equilibrium state. After all, thermodynamics is a subject of three E's, equilibrium, energy and entropy. So, it deals with the systems in equilibrium. Simply calculates the how much heat is required to get the system from 1 to 2. But how much time will be taken by the system to go from 1 to 2, it is out of the purview of the thermodynamic knowledge. Only the heat, subject of heat transfer would be able to, uh, the concepts of heat transfer would be able to help us in calculating how much time might be taken by the system to go from 1 to 2 because it deals with the rate of heat transfer. It is not simply, it is not simply the amount of heat we are interested in calculating. Rather, we are calculating the rate of heat transfer in joule per second or watt. Almost every problem, every problem uh, uh, in the heat transfer subject, the Q will be answer will be getting in watts or joule per second or kilowatts. So, I would like to uh, give distinguish this uh, two subjects in a more practical manner by giving one important example. I will just take one important example to make you understand what is the main difference between uh, uh, analysis of heat, be, uh, what is the uh, main difference between uh, the thermodynamic analysis and the heat transfer analysis of heat energy. Okay? So, how these two subjects uh, are different as regard to that very important term heat. Heat is a form of energy, we are all aware. That, okay? So, according to thermodynamics, heat is a low grade energy. We are, that also thermodynamics would emphasize, particularly the second law of thermodynamics. So, what is the main difference between these two subjects as regard to the term heat, I would like to highlight here. Suppose that I have taken, I have taken a 10 kg water, 10 kg water in a container. I have taken 1 kg steel block. This water is at room temperature say 30 degrees Celsius. 1 kg steel block may be at 100 degrees Celsius. Steel block, 1 kg steel block. I just thrown the steel block into that water. Finally, the steel block, I had given enough time to settle down the things. Finally, that steel block and the water would come into thermal equilibrium with each other and finally they will arrive at some thermal equilibrium temperature Tf. The Tf could be easily calculated from the energy balance or the calorimetry equation. Energy balance states that assuming that no heat is lost to the surroundings, no heat is gained from the surroundings, heat lost by, heat lost by steel is equal to heat gained by water. So, this is the energy balance equation which is prominently also called as the uh, calorimetry equation, heat gained by water. What is the uh, uh, heat lost by the steel? Mass of the steel, specific heat of the steel into 100 minus Tf is equal to mass of water, Cp of water into Tf minus 30. So, from this we can calculate the final equilibrium temperature of that steel and water system, final equilibrium, thermal equilibrium temperature, final equilibrium temperature can be easily obtained. Okay. If you just look at this example, all the three laws of thermodynamics, I am just giving the thermodynamics perspective of this uh, analysis of this particular problem. I would like to show you what is the thermodynamic perspective or thermodynamic aspect of this problem. If you just observe this problem carefully, all the three laws of thermodynamics were used. What is the first law of, uh, what is the uh, zeroth law of thermodynamics says? Zeroth law of thermodynamics says thermal equilibrium concept. Okay, it is a thermal equilibrium concept it gives. That means when two bodies are in uh, thermal equilibrium with each other, their temperatures are equal. Yes, here this steel block and the water are in thermal equilibrium. Therefore, their temperatures are equal. So, that we have calculated Tf. What is the first law of thermodynamics says? What is the first law of thermodynamics says? It is a law of conservation of energy. 
energy can neither be created nor destroyed that is energy balance must always hold good in every pro in every problem law of conservation of energy that is what we have written there this is the law of conservation of energy that is heat lost by the steel is equal to heat gained by the water assuming that no heat is lost uh, from this system to the surroundings no heat is gained from the surroundings to the system so entire uh, entire business entire uh, heat transfer business is happening between the steel and the water only no heat is given out no heat is taken from outside it is only purely uh, heat transfer business between the steel and the water that is the that means all the heat given by the uh, steel is entirely taken by the water that is called energy balance the second law of thermodynamics if you see a second law of thermodynamics particularly the clash statement that is a, what is a clashier statement of second law of thermodynamics states heat always flow from high temperature to the low temperature second law of thermodynamics the heat always flow from high temperature to the low temperature only this is the direction of the heat transfer second law of thermodynamics clashier statement tells about the direction of the heat flow that is heat transfer must happen from high temperature to the low temperature yes from 100 degrees celsius to the 30 from steel block to the water in all the three laws of thermodynamics we are observing in this problem but when you look at the heat transfer aspect of the problem can you calculate how much time might have been taken by the system to go from here to here can thermodynamics uh, can give it uh, any idea about answering that question i would like to know say for example in this problem i would like to know what would be the temperature of that steel block i have dropped it exactly after five seconds after dropping i would like to know what is the temperature of the steel block exactly i have I just uh, I, I dropped it steel block exactly after five seconds of time how much will be the temperature of the steel block i would like to know can thermodynamics answer that question no never it can't answer. It, it doesn't have that uh, particular uh, uh, idea. Any idea about to, how to answer that question. Or rather, steel is dropped here into the water. To reach from 100 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius, how much time would be taken by the steel block? Can thermodynamics answer that question? No. But all the answers of these questions can be given by the subject called heat transfer. Heat transfer can tell about, can give the answers to all those questions. Thermodynamics cannot be able to give the answers to those questions because thermodynamics simply deals with initial equilibrium state and final equilibrium state. How rapidly that change of state proceeds, it is out of the purview of the thermodynamic concepts or thermodynamic class. Only the subject of heat transfer will be able to answer those all those questions. I can calculate the temperature of the steel from the concepts of heat transfer. I can calculate the temperature of the steel at any time what I want during the cooling of the steel block. Or to reach so and so temperature how much time is taken or rather at any instant of time what is the temperature of the steel block. All these answers can be answered from the, from the concepts of heat transfer or from the loss of heat transfer. Okay, so that is the main distinguishing feature between the heat transfer subject and the thermodynamic subject. Simply the, I can put in one word that thermodynamics simply deals with how much heat will be required to get a system from one equilibrium state to the another equilibrium state. That is the, after all, all the laws of thermodynamics mean about. They mean only how much heat will be required to get a system from one equilibrium state to the final equilibrium state. But how quickly, how rapidly, how fastly that system will be proceeding from initial state to the final state or rather time. How much time will be taken by the system to go from the initial state to the final state. The thermodynamics cannot answer only heat transfer subject can be able to answer those questions. I hope you understood the main difference between these two subjects uh, called thermodynamics and heat transfer. But I can also would like to say that in every problem of thermo, uh, heat transfer, in every problem of heat transfer, whatever may be the radiation analysis or convection or conduction, uh, the energy balance is the most common equation is always applied. In every problem of heat transfer, the most common equation very often we write is energy balance, which states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed in that form. Okay. So the energy balance equation, that is the first law of thermodynamics, is inherently and indirectly being written in almost every problem of uh, heat transfer problem solving. Okay, keep that point in mind. Okay, 
So that, I don't say that thermodynamics is not used in heat transfer. It is being used, but in a different way it is being used. So uh, having seen the uh, heat transfer, uh, the difference between heat transfer and uh, thermodynamics, now let us understand what are the modes of heat transfer. Okay, And also I would like to highlight here that thermodynamics is something like an abstract subject. Some things we assume which are not happening practically. For example, if we just look at the Carnot cycle, if we just look at the Carnot cycle, Carnot proposes a heat transfer with no temperature difference. Carnot proposes a heat transfer with no temperature difference. In the, uh, there, in the Carnot cycle, there are two heat transfer processes, isothermal heat supply and isothermal heat rejection. In the Carnot cycle, uh, there is a reversible heat transfer happening, heat transfer without any temperature difference between the source and the working fluid. Okay. And similarly, while the heat rejection also during the Carnot cycle, heat is being rejected with no temperature difference. But can it happen practically? Never. Because any practical heat transfer which we are observing in our day-to-day -day life, always all these heat transfers would happen, would happen with a some finite temperature difference. A heat transfer can be called as a reversible heat transfer only if the temperature difference between the giver and the receiver uh, tends to zero. Such kind of a reversible heat transfer, we, uh, Carnot has proposed in his most famous cycle having the highest thermal efficiency. Okay. Carnot proposed in his most famous cycle that heat is being transferred with no temperature difference and he called that kind of a heat transfer as a reversible heat transfer. But all the practical heat transfers that happen in our day to day life, which we are going to calculate in the entire subject of heat transfer, all these heat transfers do happen with a finite temperature difference. Therefore, all the practical heat transfers are irreversible to some extent or a greater extent. So, rever reversible heat transfer that is heat transfer with no temperature difference is an hypothetical or ideal or imaginative process which you are proposing only in those reversible cycles called as a Carnot cycle. Okay. So, practical heat transfers definitely require a some finite temperature difference. What we are going to see later that more the temperature difference, more the temperature difference, faster the rate of heat transfer in any mode, in any mode of heat transfer, whether it is a conduction, convection or radiation, we are going to see in future that greater the temperature difference, faster the rate of heat transfer. Higher the temperature difference between the giver and the receiver, the quickness, the fastness with which the heat will flow will be greater. So, that is what we are going to see in all the modes of heat transfer. Come on, first let us understand about the what are the various modes of heat transfer. The heat transfer that is due to the temperature difference uh, that is happening. Heat transfer is a phenomenon which happens due to the temperature difference according to the Clash's statement of second law of thermodynamics. So, all the modes of heat transfer must follow that Clash's statement of second law of thermodynamics which states that heat always flow naturally, spontaneously from high temperature to the low temperature. So, that would happen in three distinct modes. First mode is conduction, second mode is convection, third mode is radiation. First, let us understand in detail uh, what is the mechanism of heat transfer. Uh, in all three distinctive modes. First, let me explain about the conduction. Suppose that I have taken one metal rod, maybe aluminum rod or some steel rod. This is a metal rod. One end of the metal rod I have placed over a flame, certain source or a flame I have kept placed it. And the other end I am holding. One end is placed over a flame, the other end I am holding this. After some time, after a little bit of time, definitely the end which I am holding, I can sense the hotness. I would not be able to hold it anymore. I have to leave that because I can't bear that hotness. So, I am keeping one end of the metal rod on the flame, the other end I am holding. I am observing that after a little amount of time, I can sense the hotness at the other end. I say that heat is flowing from this high temperature to the low temperature of the rod by conduction mode. Heat. I say that heat is said to be conducting heat is said to be conducting through this metal rod between from the high temperature end to the low temperature end and how does it happen this happens like this unlike uh, fluids entire matter can be broadly divided into two parts one is 
solids and there is fluids fluids means liquids gases vapors all come under that category liquids gases and vapors all are fluids unlike fluids in solids the molecules whatever that are present in the solid they do not have any kind of a freedom to move from one location to the another location because they are rigidly fixed to their positions unlike the fluids in solids the molecules of the matter or the solid matter do not have any kind of a freedom to leave their place uh, to they leave their places and they are rigidly fixed to their places okay they don't have any kind of um, uh, freedom to go from one location to the another location within the solid mass but they have one kind of a freedom even though they cannot leave that place if they are, if the molecules are excited thermally due to the temperature increase they could vibrate vigorously staying at there only they would begin to vibrate vigorously uh, with some good frequency about that position they keep vibrating so these molecules which are rigidly fixed here they can't leave that once these molecules which are in the uh, which are near the high temperature source of heat called flame once they these molecules receive that heat they begin to vibrate vigorously with greater and greater amplitude and frequency they just begin to vibrate like this without leaving that molecules do not get displaced from that position molecules stay there stay there only but staying there they keep vibrating vigorously about that position while vibrating they could transfer their, that vibrational energy to the neighboring molecules as these molecules keep vibrating that could in turn make the next molecule to vibrate vigorously that it, that vibrational energy can be transferred to the next molecule that begins to vibrate so that, like that as such so the molecular vibrational energy is being transferred from one molecule to the another molecule and this is contributing to the 30% of the total heat conducted when they get vibrated i say that i say that the temperature that particular molecule has got more temperature so okay so this keeps vibrating because it receives the heat it keeps vibrating while vibrating that gives the vibrational energy to the next molecule that in turn gives that vibrational energy to the next molecule so from molecule to molecule there is a transfer of vibrational energy that is contributing to the 30% of conduction 30% of conduction of course through this metal rod by molecular lattice vibrational energy transfer molecular lattice vibrational energy transfer and how do the remaining 70% of conduction do happen it can happens like this molecules have got the atoms atoms have the we know that atomic structure the concepts of atomic structure are very well aware of we have the centrally placed positively charged nucleus we have the free electrons in the outermost orbits we have the free electrons in the outermost orbits fortunately metallic materials like we have a, a, a these metals uh, are placed on the left hand side of the mandelieu's uh, periodic table in the chemistry you must have seen that periodic table uh, generally all these metals are placed on the left hand side in the metallic materials maybe steel or aluminum or copper etc in these metallic materials you will see a plenty of free electrons free electrons or valence electrons also we can say free electrons or valence electrons which are present in the outermost orbits there are plenty of free electrons are there these free electrons or valence electrons they receive that heat energy from the source this there is a source of heat flame is a source of heat okay they receive the heat energy from that source of heat and simply jump to the next molecule giving the energy to the free electron present over there that would receive the energy free electron uh, present on the next molecule will receive that energy and jump to the next molecule so from molecule to molecule there is a free electron transfer which is carrying the heat energy free electron transfer this is contributing to the 70% 70% due to free electron transfer from molecule to the molecule see these uh, molecule free electrons present in the outermost orbits of the atoms 
present in the molecules nearer to the source of heat they receive the heat energy and simply leave that atom and jump to the next uh, next molecule giving that energy to the free electron present in the outermost orbit of the next molecule or outermost orbit of the atom contained in the next molecule and that would receive the heat energy and jump to the next molecule so from uh, molecule to molecule the free electrons keep jumping and carrying the heat energy so 70% of the total heat conduction would be contributed by this free electron transfer or valence electron transfer and the 30% of the heat energy is contributed by the molecular lattice vibration energy transfer mind that this 70 30 percent uh, uh, this breakup is pertaining to the only the metallic materials this, this is not a general one this is this is a met for metallic rods uh, this is 70 30 uh, ratio uh, we can approximate 30 percent contributed by the molecular lattice vibration energy transfer because there is a certain lattice structural uh, arrangement will be there in every material that lattice how that arrangement will be there will be different from material to material you will be seeing that in the material science also so there the, the kind of the lattice molecular structural arrangement will be different from material to material how closely the molecules are arranged etc so uh, uh, this 70 percent 30 percent contribution of the uh, conduction by the free electron transfer and uh, by the a molecular lattice vibrational energy transfer is uh, is pertaining to the metallic materials okay so uh, 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 the, the, uh, that is the reason why metals are very very good conductors of heat because they do have this plenty of free electrons metals metallic uh, metals are the best conductors of heat very good that is why in all the kitchenware uh, in, in the heat exchanger pipes and the boiler tubes why we make them with the metallic materials because we want to have a rapid heat transfer in the kitchen we also in our kitchen also we will be using all the utensils made of metals in the cookers they are made of, made of metals all the kitchenware they are made up of the metallic materials only because metals are the very good conductors of heat the reason is they have a plenty of free or free or valence electrons free or valence electrons which are the electrons available in the outermost orbits this is the reason why metals are the good conductors of electricity also this commonality of conduction of heat and conduction of electric current is because of the free electrons prevailing in the outermost orbits of the metals metals are good conductors of electricity and good conductors of heat energy so this common feature is because of this abundant free electrons present in the outermost orbits but when you come to this heat conduction what is the best metallic uh, uh, conductors in the order of uh, in the order i am putting the best known metals is silver highest conductivity thermal conductivity is 410 watt per meter kelvin second comes is copper 385 watt per meter kelvin silver is very costly thing which we cannot think of using so that is only a uh, theoretical purpose copper uh, you, you use it copper is also costly but we will use it in many heat transfer applications copper fins we employ in many uh, equipment we attach the copper fins to increase the heat transfer rate. then it comes the aluminium aluminium is even more prominent because of its lightness low density then comes the steels there are varieties of steels are there so the k will may vary between 14 to around 35 watt per meter kelvin the pers based on the percentage of the carbon the conductivity of the steel may vary so the all these are metals possessing very good thermal conductivity because of the plenty of the free electrons but general rule is steel is an alloy they are pure metals but steel is an alloy a general rule is that conductivity of the pure metal k is the thermal conductivity what is thermal conductivity which is the ability of the material to allow the heat to get conducted quickly if the material has got more conductivity it will allow the heat to get conducted easily through the material conduction could happen rapidly it is very simple in a cold winter peak winter if you just touch the any metallic body any metallic body like a window frame or whatever it is 
uh, you will feel chillness or a metallic uh, handle or whatever it is you feel chillness but when you touch the any wooden body in the peak winter you don't feel that supposing a wooden body is there you touch it you don't feel anything you don't feel chillness where if you touch the metallic body you feel the chillness the reason is both the wooden bar and the metallic body they are at the same temperature your body is warm your body can sense the hotness and coldness so if you touch the metallic bar the reheat heat could flow rapidly from your body into the metallic bar but when you touch the wooden body wood is a bad conductor of heat you don't feel uh, heat will not conduct that rapidly as you see in case of the metal so you don't feel any chillness touch any metallic body in the peak winter definitely you feel chillness because of the high thermal conductivity so conductivity is the ability of the material to allow the heat to get conducted quickly or rapidly so this uh, conductivity of the pure metal is definitely greater than the conductivity of its alloy for example conductivity of the iron pure metal is greater than the conductivity of the steel conductivity of the copper is greater than conductivity of brass or branch brass or branch brass or the branch or the uh, alloys of the copper the reason is alloy means what some foreign material will be there that will be acting as an impurity thereby the conductivity will be slightly gets uh, reduced so supposing if you look at the iron there iron conductivity will be around 45 or 50 but steel may be having 35 only slightly lesser than the alloy somebody will ask me where is the gold position gold is a precious metal uh, conductivity of the gold will be 319 watt per meter kelvin gold is also, also of course yellow metal it is also metallic uh, material so these are all the uh, things which are uh, possessing good conductivity because metals are the metals are supposed to have a good conductivity because of this this particular uh, abundant uh, free electrons present in their outermost orbits of the atoms so having seen this now I would like to the, uh, the actual definition of the conduction having understood the definition having understood the mechanism of the conduction now I would like to define what is the conduction conduction is the mode of heat transfer which generally occurs in solids don't think that uh, it will not occur in uh, fluids it will occur but in our problematic sense in our heat transfer uh, in the gate preparation sense or gate problem sense generally when you talk about a conduction a, a metallic a metallic slab or a wooden slab uh, or any pipe material would be possessing uh, conductivity through that uh, solid material conduction is supposed to be happening but fluids also possess the conductivity i will tell the later how the conduction happens in the fluids first let me define what is the conduction means conduction is the mode of heat transfer which generally occurs in solids due to temperature difference due to temperature difference associated with molecular lattice vibration and energy transfer associated with molecular lattice vibrational energy transfer and also by and also by free electron transfer so this particular uh, mechanism uh, which you are you are expecting to be happening in the 
solid materials this kind of a mechanism of conduction you will be expecting like why molecules keep vibrating and transferring and uh, there will be a transfer of the free electrons from atom to atom this kind of a mechanism of conduction you would be expecting to see generally in the solid materials the mechanism of conduction in gases and liquids should be entirely different i will discuss about it later okay now i would like to state uh, here that metals are uh, metals are good conductors of metals are good conductors of heat and electricity and electricity due to presence of due to presence of abundant free electrons due to presence of abundant free electrons in the outermost orbits in the outermost orbits of atoms contained in the molecules okay this commonality you can say all generally uh, all electrically good conductors are generally a good conductors of heat because of this uh, presence of the free electrons best example is metals but there will be a notable exception is there all the generally all electric conductors are also that is one one general statement you can give that all electrically good conductors are also good heat conductors because of the presence of the abundant free electrons but there is an important notable exception notable exception is that notable exception is diamond whose thermal conductivity is 2300 which is a non metal which is non metal the diamond is a non metal it is not a metal it cannot conduct electricity it does not have the free electrons diamond uh, does not have the free electrons in the in its atoms in the outermost orbits uh, it is not a metal at all but how come its thermal conductivity is so high how come that uh, why that conductivity of the diamond is so high it is not because of the presence of free electrons rather it is because of the arrangement of the molecules molecular lattice arrangement is so perfect and orderly and very close in the diamond that these molecules while vibrating they can rapidly conduct the heat very quickly as such it is like this diamond is a diamond has reason is reason i am giving the reason is diamond has perfect crystalline crystalline perfect crystalline molecular lattice structure crystalline molecular lattice structure arrangement of atoms see non metals are broadly classified as crystalline and amorphous we have seen in the material science also non metals are broadly classified as crystalline and amorphous in the crystalline materials you will observe that the arrangement is perfectly ordered very close like this molecules are arranged like a very closely closely they are placed orderly they are placed not close not only closely but very orderly manner you will see that kind of arrangement of the molecules okay so when it is given a when the heat is being conducted when heat is being conducted when the this molecule is vibrating that vibrational energy can be very quickly and ra rapidly can be transported or transmitted through the next molecules because the arrangement of the molecules is such that 
if the one molecule is getting the heat energy, that vibrational energy can be rapidly given to the next molecule because of the proximity, because of the closeness, because of the arrangement, perfect arrangement, the molecules could easily exchange that vibrational energy very rapidly and quickly. This is the reason why diamond has got highest thermal conductivity. Look at this, uh, 2300, even far higher than those of the metals. So, the highest conductivity of diamond can be attributed to its perfect crystalline lattice structure. Okay, but whereas when you look at the examples I am giving here, few examples are not only diamond, one is diamond, second thing is quartz, quartz is also a, third thing is graphite. All these are uh, uh, crystalline materials, therefore, hence they are possessing even more conductivity than the metals. They, though there is a non-metal, they are possessing more thermal conductivity than the metals, even though they are not having any free electrons. There is no free electrons in the outermost orbits. They cannot conduct electricity, but they can conduct uh, heat even more rapidly than the metals because of this perfect, uh, perfect crystalline arrangement of the molecules. In the amorphous materials, how do you see? If you just look at the amorphous materials, molecules are arranged in a random manner and there will be voids also, there will be gaps, there will be voids. Best example is glass, glass is amorphous, its thermal conductivity is only one point, uh, thermal conductivity of glass is only 1.2. Because, uh, because of the, there will be voids there, though the mo molecules are receiving the energy by vibration, they cannot uh, transmit effectively that energy to the next molecule. So, we understood that uh, in that conductivity scale, the thermal conductivity scale, highest conductivities are possessed by crystalline materials like diamond, quartz and also by the metals, one extreme you are saying, the thermal conductivity. The other extreme, if you see, there will be more important materials which are called as a very bad conductors of heat known as insulators. They are more important than the uh, conductors because why insulators are more important practically? The reason is whenever you want to prevent, whenever you want to stop the heat flow, want to reduce the heat flow, you will, we are going to use the insulators. Whenever you want to enhance the heat transfer, increase the heat transfer rate, you want to have a rapid heat transfer rate, we will be using the conductors like the metals, like the metals, right? And uh, for your information, diamond also is used, diamond is a very precious metal, but still it is used as a uh, um, uh, fin material or a diamond sinks will be there in the some electronic devices, a tiny diamond sinks, heat sinks they call, they may be used in the very important electronic devices to rapidly dissipate the heat because of its high thermal conductivity. For information, a uh, fin, any fin uh, material must have a high thermal conductivity. That is why aluminium or copper fins are generally used. Very occasionally, very rarely, even diamond fins also you may have to incorporate to increase the heat transfer rate. Fine, okay. So, whenever you want to enhance the or increase the heat transfer rate, we are using the uh, good conductors. On, on that scale, on the conductivity scale, I am telling. Good con conductors are on your extreme side, metals and crystalline materials. On the other side, we have the insulators, okay. Glass can be taken as a, a, a semi-insulator only because of its low conductivity. Look at this one, it is only 1.2. So, what is, what is this K? I will, I am going to define K there. First of all, definition of the K, I will give it. What is the name of that K? Thermal conductivity. You must have heard in physics electrical conductivity. Like that similarly, it is a thermal. Thermal is a word, thermal conductivity. Thermal is a word pertaining to the heat. Okay. It is the property of the material. It is a property, thermophysical property. It is the thermophysical property of material. which tells about
the ability of the material which tells about the ability of the material to allow the heat energy to get conducted through material. Which tells about the ability of the material uh, to get the conduct to get conducted through the material. How rapidly the heat energy can get a, can get conducted through the material. How quickly the heat can uh, uh, get conducted through the material. How rapidly, how quickly it is prescribed by K. If the K is more, heat can easily can get conducted through the material. As I said, in that conductivity scale, in the highest side you are seeing the if this is the conductivity scale. K is the watt per meter Kelvin, its units. We are seeing the metals, metals and uh, beyond that we see the crystalline materials. I had given the example, you know, quartz, etc., diamond. Best known metal uh, solid conductor is diamond. And the other side, we have the insulators, other extreme side. If this is a scale of conductivity, this is a conductivity scale we have the insulators here. Example, glass wool, sawdust, wood, wood also you can say, asbestos, refractory brick, These are all the very bad conductors. So if, it, if you just look at this conductivity of the glass wool, it is 0 0.075. Glass wool is a very bad conductor of heat. Asbestos, thermal conductivity, conductivity of the glass wool, I am talking. Conductivity of the asbestos is around 1.2 refractory brick sorry it is it is 0 0.2 conductivity of the asbestos will be around 0 0.9 and polyurethane foam there are specially made materials which are used in the refrigerator walls it is having very low 0 0.02 like that very low thermal conductivity in particular, this is used in the refrigerator walls. This is used in uh, refrigerator walls. It is used in the uh, furnaces, metallurgical furnaces. Refractory means heat resistant. It is used in the furnaces. Asbestos is used in the uh, uh, heat exchangers, glass wool also, okay, sawdust, wood. These are all the all these materials are very bad conductors of heat. Insulators are very bad conductors of heat. So, K is a thermophysical property. One material, one K. Is K constant for that material? Means I don't say K may be a K may be. A function of temperature. K may be a function of temperature. K may change with the temperature. 
So glass wool, you have given asbestos, refractory big polyurethane foam. These are all the prominent insulating materials that are used in the engineering applications. What are the insulators are used for? To reduce, they are, they are meant for reducing the heat transfer. Whenever you want to prevent the heat flow, you are going to use the insulators. Whenever you want to increase the heat transfers, very good conductors of heat. These are all the good conductors of heat. Whenever you want to enhance the heat transfer, for example, heat exchanger tubes you are designing. I may be using a copper or a brass or its alloys or maybe even steel pipes. Suppose you are designing a heat exchanger pipes. I may be depending upon the, I may be using the metal. I want to use the fins. I want to install the fins. I will be using the metallic fins because a fin must have high thermal conductivity, fin material. So like that. So whenever I want to arrest the heat flow, for example, in the furnaces, I want to arrest the heat flow. So I will construct a uh, walls with a refractory bricks. Refractory means heat resistant. So refractory bricks, they can withstand the high temperature of the flames generated in the furnace. At the same time, they can protect the heat. They can prevent the heat transfer between the furnace and the surroundings. That is why they are used in the furnaces. In the refrigerator, see, in the refrigerator, you are maintaining very low temperature. In the refrigerator and air conditioning, that, that particular industry also, heat transfer plays a very significant role in the design of the refrigerator or in the design of the air conditioner. In the refrigerator walls, they keep this polyurethane foam, uh, these uh, specially made foams, chemically made foams, because of their very low thermal conductivity, they can protect the low temperature that is created inside that refrigerated box. So, if it is not, a, if it is that puff is not kept, heat may penetrate easily from the outside to the inside, disturbing that low temperature. Refrigeration means what? Creating and maintaining that low temperature. To maintain that low temperature, we have to surround that refrigerator walls with a very bad conductor of heat that is insulator. Most commonly used material is puff. Okay, we know what, we understood what is a K means. K is a property, thermophysical property of material. One material, one K. But, but that may change with the temperature. So now coming to the, how do the conduction happens in the gases? We have talked about the conduction, how the how it is happening in the solids. Now let me discuss about how do the conduction happens in the gases. Heat conduction in gases. Suppose that there is air, this is a high temperature plate, this is the low temperature plate. Gap may be, the gap between the two plates may be even 1 mm, very small gap. Though the gap is very small, even though the gap is very very small, in that gap, the outside air may go into that gap and may get entrapped. There is a high temperature plate, low temperature plate, parallel plates are kept. Uh, but the ga gap between them is too small, maybe 1 mm or even less than that. Even though gap is very small, the outside air may enter into that gap and it may become stagnant because it does not have any space to move. It becomes a stag, I can say that air has become stagnant. Stagnant means what? Stationary. That air has become stagnant. Though the air is stagnant, it does not have any velocity. There is no chance for the, any motion of that air. That little volume of air may contain enormous millions of molecules. By looking at the Avogadro's number, we know the Avogadro's number. Well, just by looking at that 6.029 to 10 power 23, you have uh, learned in chemistry also. Just by seeing that number, you can, you can think that even though the volume of the air entrapped is very, very small, the number of molecules contained in that volume is enormous and those molecules will not be static. They keep moving. Air is stagnant. Air is not moving. But the molecules contained in the air keep moving, uh, keep moving uh, randomly, zigzagly. The molecules are randomly and zigzagly moving. Enormous number of molecules. 
millions of molecules I can say though volume of the air is little and these molecules while uh, uh, while while moving they keep colliding among themselves and the collisions are perfectly elastic the molecules they are they are uh, moving randomly zigzagly but they keep colliding among themselves and the collisions are perfectly elastic and during that collision they may exchange the momentum okay so the molecules are randomly moving zigzagly moving in that available little volume these molecules which are in the presence which are in the vicinity say for example all these molecules which are in the vicinity of the high temperature plate because of their proximity with the high temperature plate they are close to the high temperature plate they are having high temperature high velocity molecules their temperature is more as a result the velocity is also more what is the link between the temperature and velocity yes there is one important theory called as a kinetic theory of gases which you which you learn in uh, thermodynamics also from kinetic theory of gases we know that the rms velocity of the gas molecule is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature of the gas kinetic theory of uh, gases says that there is a very strong link between the kinetic energy of the molecule and the temperature of the molecule if the temperature of the molecule is more the kinetic energy of the molecule also will be more and also its velocity also will be more so the kinetic energy connects links between the kinetic energy of the molecule and the temperature of the molecule so it says that rms velocity of the gas molecule that is root mean square velocity of the gas molecule is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas okay so these molecules are having a more uh, temperature and more velocity because these molecules are close to the high temperature plate they must be having more greater velocity and greater temperature and similarly these molecules these molecules here they are, are having low temperature because they are close to the low temperature plate low temperature low velocity molecules but the molecules are not stagnant they keep moving the molecules keep moving so when they keep moving there is every possibility that this high velocity molecule may collide with the low velocity molecule so when they keep moving randomly these high velocity molecules as they keep moving in that little available volume they cross some barrier and they come in to collide with the low velocity molecules thereby they exchange the momentum so this high velocity molecule when it collides with the low velocity the molecule this gives its momentum to this this becomes slower and this becomes faster so this is the high velocity molecule this is the low velocity molecule so when this high velocity molecule collides with this low velocity molecule there there is a transfer of momentum from this high velocity molecule to this there is a molecular momentum transfer during collision there is a molecular momentum transfer during collision so this becomes slower and this becomes faster if this receives the momentum this gives the momentum so when this because these well these molecules so i, I it, it is like this when these molecules are randomly moving these high velocity molecules they cross some barrier you can think that there is some one barrier is there they cross that barrier 
they come in to collide with the low velocity molecules they transfer their momentum to these molecules so these molecules gain the momentum because of this collisions and these molecules become faster as the molecules become faster i can say the temperature of these molecules is increasing i can say that the heat is conducting heat is conducting heat is conducting from this high temperature plate to this low temperature plate through the gas through the gas heat is conducting please note that heat is conducting through the gas heat conduction through gas how it is conducting because of the molecular momentum transfer because of the because of the intermolecular collisions i repeat heat conduction through gas is happening because of the molecular momentum transfer when high velocity molecules collide with the low velocity molecules so that i would like to write that point here heat conduction occurs through gases by molecular momentum transfer by molecular momentum transfer when high velocity molecules when high velocity high temperature high velocity means obviously temperature also will be more when high velocity high temperature molecules collide with the low velocity low temperature molecules collide with the low velocity but in general but in general gases are very poor conductors of heat very poor conductors of heat very bad conductors gases are not good conductors i i'll just give the example for example conductivity of the thermal conductivity what is that property which tells about the ability of the medium to conduct that is a k if you just look at the conductivity of the air at room temperature 0.026 watt per meter kelvin 0.026 watt per meter let's look at the conductivity it is even lesser than the uh, many insulating materials it is even lesser than the many insulating materials thermal conductivity of the air uh, not only air all the gases are very poor or bad conductors of heat not it not be air only all the gases are very uh, bad conductors of heat and one thing i would like to tell here that in case if the temperature of the gases increase this gas that conductivity of the gas also will increase why at higher temperatures the molecules will become more agitated more uh, more uh, random the randomness of the molecules will increase you may expect more number of collisions and uh, the rate of momentum transfer per unit time per unit time also will be higher if the temperature of the gases increase the molecules will become more agile more agitated more randomness so the number of collisions per unit time among the molecules also will increase as such the rate of momentum transfer also will be faster the heat conduction rate will be faster so i can generalize statement that as the temperature of the gases increase their thermal conductivity also increase
their thermal conductivity also increase that can be seen in this graph also thermal conductivity of the gas versus the temperature if you see this is hydrogen gas helium air all these gases you are observing that as the temperature of the gases increase their thermal conductivity is also increasing we may also notice very important that at any given temperature the lighter gases the lighter gases would have more more conductivity also at any given temperature lighter gases lighter gases means having the lesser molecular weight lighter gases have higher thermal conductivity have higher thermal conductivity so but so as for as regard to the uh, conduction through gases are concerned you should remember that gases are very bad conductors of heat number 1 number 2 as the temperature of the gases increase their conductivity also will increase just like viscosity you can remember by, you are going to see in fluid mechanics also that in fluid mechanics also you are going to see that as the temperature of the gases increase the kinematic viscosity of the gases also will increase you just remember the kinematic viscosity same response you see for the conductivity also you can generalize it like that as temperature of the gas increase i can say kinematic viscosity kv symbol is nu increases thermal conductivity k increases specific heat of the gas increase but density of the gas will decrease you can remember that as the temperature of the gases increase what is the kv kinematic viscosity this is thermal conductivity so this is a specific heat these are the density standard symbols because these properties throughout the chapter they keep we keep using the same standard sim notation density specific heat thermal conductivity this is a new this symbol is new meant for kinematic viscosity defined defined as dynamic viscosity divided by density very important property in fluid mechanics also okay so for gases uh, these three things will increase but density will decrease please remember that okay now we have seen uh, that uh, conductivity in gases but the mechanism of the conduction in liquids will be entirely different but liquids are better conductors of heat than gases liquids are better conductors of heat than gases for example if you look at the conductivity of the water it is 0.63 see conductivity water is a far better conductor than uh, air in nature has given us only two coolants mother nature has provided us only two coolants one is atmospheric air other thing is the water water means it may be sea water or it may be a river water but approximately you can remember the conductivity of water as 0.6 okay among liquids mercury has the highest thermal conductivity mercury hg has highest k that is why it is also conductivity of the mercury see that is why mercury is called liquid metal that is why mercury is known as liquid metals it is a thermometric fluid mercury hg is why it is a thermometric fluid 
because of one reason is one one reason is its thermal conductivity mercury has the highest uh, thermal conductivity that is the reason why it is used in the thermometers also for temperature measurement of course other reasons also there low vapor pressure good volume expansion thermal expansion of volumetric expansion is more for the liquid why hg is used as a thermometric fluid is one reason is thermal conductivity second reason is a very low vapor pressure third reason is it expands more when it gets heated volume expansion of the mercury is high that is why it is commonly used as a thermometric fluid and liquid metals liquid metals like mercury like mercury bismuth are the special uh, are the special coolants in uh, nuclear reactors or very special coolants special cooling media in nuclear reactors because in the nuclear reactors heat transfer uh, rates must be very very high they are the uh, heavy water heavy water no heavy water not the uh, normal water d2 deuterium oxide heavy water uh, and mercury they are the special coolants used in the nuclear reactors because they can provide the highest heat transfer rates because one reason is their thermal conductivity is very very high look at this 8 point water has got only 0.63 normal water okay now we have understood enough uh, about the conduction but when you talk about the conduction now onwards think it as a internal mode of heat transfer in the gate perspective in the gate point of view you think at the conduction as that mode of heat transfer happening through a, a solid material due to temperature difference a solid body what is the internal mode of heat transfer occurring through that solid body maybe it is a wall or a pipe or a metallic sphere whatever it is you take that internal mode of heat transfer occurring through a solid body you name it as a conduction for every heat transfer problem conductivity will be definitely will be given in the problem you don't have to remember anything all the data will be provided in the gate problems okay now coming to the second mode called as a convection first let me explain you about the what is the convection mode of heat transfer okay 